Good morning, this is Robert with Pioneer Smokehouses, and I'm out here at the crack of dawn to start my Boston butt pork roast on a Traeger pellet grill. So um, let's start with getting this prepped and getting it ready. So here I have my Boston butt, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Last night I mixed up my ingredients, and uh, so that way you know what those are real quick. Let's go over that. I'm gonna start by putting a pitcher up here in the top corner and uh, that's the plate of the ingredients and what's on there starting from the we're going clockwise starting over here uh, going with uh, light brown sugar that's a half a cup two tablespoons of sugar one tablespoon of black pepper one tablespoon of kosher salt a half of a garlic um, half a tablespoon of onion powder one teaspoon of yellow mustard and one teaspoon of ground cumin and somehow there might be smoked paprika in the middle of the plate I don't know how that got on there but it's not on the recipe anyway you know how it got on there so um, I did adjust a little bit on the standard recipe but that's to my taste so I lightened up the salt uh, pork does have a lot of salt content in it so we just kind of, I always back it off a little bit. That is kosher salt. So you'll get more flavor for less salt because of the size of the crystals. But a lot of that's gonna melt into the food anyway. So you're not gonna notice that effect. Um, but just don't over salt no matter what. Um, and then as far as garlic and cumin, those are two of my favorite combinations with pork. So I like to add just a little bit extra. Cumin's one of my wife's favorites and uh, garlic and pork to me is just a combination that you can't beat. I put it in a Ziploc bag last night and mixed it up really well. So you could use um, a shaker or whatever you like to use normally. I do usually keep some of a uh, generic beef rub in a shaker that I have left over. Um, but uh, so that's what's in the rub. And uh, I preheated the smoker <coughs> to uh, 225. And I put my strongest pellets in. I put the last of my hickory in here. And um, then we'll be switching over. I uh, wanted a little bit more hickory. And I'll explain that to you. Um, what I like to do with a pork roast, something that's cooking for a long time like this, is I like to put a strong mix in first. And then I'll change it for the second half of the cook. This is 225 at... Um, we're looking somewhere around um, eight to 10 hours. So I'm gonna rub the bottom of this really quick. Uh, the fat side is always the top. And if you get your cut and it's got too much fat on it, you can uh, trim it a little bit. So right there, you'll see that I spread it pretty evenly. Um, what I like to do is I like to start on the sides on most uh, cuts, especially like when you're doing something like a brisket. And then you can take what's left and spread it onto the face. It's convenient to do all this in the kitchen, but I just like to do out in the outside. And something I want to mention to you is that this cut is usually almost like a filleted cut. So if yours is not holding together, I recommend that you tie it like tress it or something. So that way it'll stay close together. Um, this one is partially separated. So I'm going to go with it like it is. But if I was concerned about this, you can see um, here it just kind of opens up a lot. Now I'm not going to... I'll sprinkle just a little bit in there, but I'm not going to actually season the inside of that because I want it to be uniform on the seasoning. And then, so now we've got all the outside edges, and then we'll finish off on the top. And uh, if you're concerned about the fat rendering or if it is too thick and you don't want to trim it, then um, I recommend that you score it. So um, by scoring it, you're just going to put a cross pattern like cross hatches. So you're going to go about an inch apart with the knife, about a quarter inch into the fat, just deep enough that you touch the meat but not go into it. And that way you can release a lot of that fat. When we do our cooking process, we will flip it in the middle 
and uh, that'll make the difference there. So I'm going to keep going with all of the rub that I have. This um, rub recipe will do a little bit bigger roast than this one. So if you have a little left over, don't be uh, surprised or worried. It's not a big deal. Um, and if you mix it on the side and don't put your uh, cross-contaminated hands in the bag, then you can uh, save it for later for like pork chops and stuff because it is a really good flavoring for pork chops too. Um, I would probably add more smoked paprika. I mean garlic. Yeah, garlic. Sorry. Okay. So now we have it completely done and this is the top side, the side with the um, fat cap on there. So what I'm going to do is uh, my hands are totally covered. So first I'm going to go ahead and remove one glove. Great, my clean pants now. I should bring out paper towels one of these days. And uh, you know what? I was going to take a picture, but I'm actually going to walk up to the camera because I want to get a nice good view of this. And I'm just going to hold it right up here and let you take a look. I think that we have enough daylight now that you can see that pretty clearly. That looks pretty good to start with to me. And uh, I will take a picture because I want to make sure I have some pictures for my website. Um, all the written information in this article will be in the link below on the website. And that article is how to smoke a Boston butt on a pellet smoker. So now we're going to open this up and it's at temperature. It's actually this uh, controller bounces around a lot, which I think is pretty normal. So I'm going to go ahead and use a grill mat, my most important thing here. And I did put a fresh piece of uh, tinfoil down on there just because uh, pork is really messy and I wanted to make sure that it doesn't mess up my um, my deflector tray down there. So I've got it all on here and today I'm using the plate instead of this, um, instead of a cookie sheet because I want to be able to slide it in easier. So I'm going to set the plate in the middle and then just kind of slide it down in there. Once it's in the position, I'm going to push that down. So now we still have a lot of seasonings on here and I'm going to feed a little bit more onto the pork roast. Not going to be a lot, but most of this is cross-contaminated, is cross -contaminated, so I can't really save it. And you're not going to really eat the fat anyway. You might, you know, get a little bite here and there, but this is going to give you really good bark. Okay, so you're going to see, I'm going to go ahead and close the lid, actually. Picture opportunity. So at the lower temperatures, this thing seems to smoke a little bit more and it is pretty consistent. Um, so I went ahead and did that and it's all primed up and the last of my pellets of my hickory is in here and it's not even close to where I want it to be but that's okay because we'll just add some other pellets on there. I would normally go four hours of hickory or um, something strong like mesquite and then I would um, make sure that the pellet hopper was really low and then fill in uh, maybe an hour's worth of apple make sure that the pellet hopper was low and then fill in the rest of the apple that I needed. So we would start with something like mesquite or hickory, which I prefer uh, hickory for the pork roast, and then switch over to apple in the middle of the smoke after about four hours. The reason is, is that I want to add as much of the smoke flavor in a pellet smoker that I can. And then I want to switch over to something mild that won't get bitter for the long, prolonged cook time. So I'm going to come back and check on this in about an hour, and if there's something to see, then we'll turn on the ca uh, camera. If not, it'll be four hours before we deal with this. So uh, we'll see you in a couple of seconds for you. All right, so it's been a little bit more than four hours here, and uh, 
it's been going along pretty good. Um, I've got the temperature set on the uh, 250 mark and it keeps bouncing back and forth a little bit. So it's uh, been running a little under, but right the second before I open it, it's at 244. That's not my target temperature. My target temperature is a little lower than that, but I'm okay with it being just a touch higher um, because it is pork roast. There's a lot of fat in it. And like I said, Boston butt, uh, pork shoulder. And we'll talk about that in a second. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna open up the lid and take a look at it here. And uh, so I don't know if you can see that. Um, I didn't bring my phone out or I take a picture, but maybe I'll get one in a couple of minutes and uh, we'll pop it up here for you after I do this cut. So the uh, fat was just a little bit thicker than I wanted. I wanted it to render down a little bit more than that, but it didn't. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and cut this and uh, give you an idea and you will see that in that picture. I'm gonna run across like this and just go score it right through the fat about every inch crossways just like this. So now we've got lines running across it like that. So now I'm gonna switch to the other side and I'm just gonna go the exact opposite so you'll get kind of a little bit of a diamond pattern. And I don't wanna push down, I just want it to go through the soft fat and not through the meat. So I'm going to um, put a picture up here that I'm going to take in a couple of minutes and I'll go ahead and close the lid. And what I want is about an hour's worth of rendering with the cuts in it and then I'll go ahead and flip it over. Since I've just closed the lid and I've been checking the pellets on a regular basis, I'm going to check them again and uh, it's going along nicely. It's not using a lot of pellets because I don't have the temperature set too high. And so the bin was completely full and I've been bouncing the temperature back and forth between 225 setting and 250 setting. And uh, right now it's showing 203 after the work I did with the lid open, but that means it's gonna pump up to full power until it passes the 250 and then it'll start to slow down, but the temperature will still keep going up for a bit. So the bin was full when I started this morning and I packed it up and when I closed it, I could barely shut the lid. And so it was almost resting on the pellets. It's about half full now. So what we've gotten out of that so far is a little over four hours with a full bin, which means that this full bin will probably net you right around eight hours. Anyway, um, so like I said, the picture's there um, and then we'll uh, flip it after about an hour. So a little bit of more of that fat can render out. I just want to make sure that um, I get a chance to get some even heat all the way around it and not to let it sit in one position. One thing I am going to do really quick right now is I'm going to rotate this. And here's your trick right here. Grill mat. I can grab the grill mat and I can just spin it around without having any hassles. I don't have to play with it. And then I just slide it back in and position it where I want it and it's not stuck to the grill grates. That, another beautiful thing of the grill mats. Anyway, so we'll see you in a little while. Okay, so I took another picture and uh, we're just gonna pop that up in the corner here, uh, try to squeeze it in a little bit so you can see that real quick. And uh, that, uh, some of the fat rendered out and in here it's starting to uh, cut loose, which is, you know, kind of plus and minus. We don't want it to get too loose. That's a good reason or a good argument for tying it up or trussing it. And, uh, but you can see there's a lot of the nice juices are just coming out here. If you just give it a little push, I'm going to just rip a little piece off the edge here. Now the edges are obviously uh, cooked to a safe temperature and I'm just going to taste a little bit of it. Try not to put my hands in my mouth. And that's a lot of the uh, dry rub kind of cooked on there. Almost, 
I would say a good description of it is almost candied to the outside. So the caramelization effect is just starting. I'm gonna brush off a little bit of this coating here because we poured the leftovers on top when we started that. And so it's a little thick. And then I'm gonna go ahead and roll it over. So I'm gonna pull the mat and pull it out just a little bit. I have my gloves on uh, to keep all the goo off of me, but I'll be honest with you, is that this is a little hot. So if you're temperature sensitive, you might wanna get some utensils or something. And you can see, I can just pick it right up off of the grill mat like that and move it around where you can't normally do that. And I'll show you that again. You can't do that on a grill grate necessarily because a lot of times things have a tendency to stick. Um, and if you don't have a grill mat, um, put some uh, vegetable spray on before you start your grill or you can use the um, onion oil trick. So you cut an onion in half and then um, oil it or dip it in a bowl of oil and then rub it onto your grill, which does two things because onions, um, they also, they're antibacterial, um, but they also get in around the gaps and with the, um, the layers, the oil tends to get into the onion a little bit, so it helps you spread it better. So I'm gonna grab this real quick and I'm just gonna roll it over. I'm going to reposition it and then it's good. Now I'm going to go ahead and close it and then uh, we're going to chat for a second here about the cut. I don't recall chatting about it um, but if I did I can just cut this part of the video out. <laughs> no I'm pretty sure we didn't talk about that. Um, but so that Boston butt is above the shoulder of the pig. So if you look at the pig and you see his leg comes up, then right above him, that, that top part of the leg is a picnic shoulder. So it's uh, the meat tends to run, the fibers tend to run up like that and then into a, a large gathering, which is what a part that connects to this cut. This cut goes above that up towards the back. And so, um, uh, upper pork shoulder or uh, Boston butt is what we're working with and that's so that's how you know where the cut is. If you look on my website uh, you'll see that um, I was playing around with some pictures and hopefully I can get a better picture but I uh, did do a drawing of that and uh, there's an explanation on the article that goes with this. The link is at the top of the video there you'll see that clearly. So anyway we're going to go ahead and let this go. Um, now I've closed the lid, so the next thing I need to do is check the pellets. And uh, we still have a good two, three hours worth of pellets in here. And I'm not going to add any pellets right now, but I am going to start checking the pellet hopper every hour because I do not want it to run low. Um, and the temperature spike has come up to about uh, 260 right now on this thing. And so it might almost be time to start turning it down and to start temp checking it. Um, it looks really good, but I don't want the temperature up above 250 anymore. I'm willing to go down a little bit lower because of the time of day it is and how long we've been cooking it. So we started around 8 a.m. and it's almost one now. So that is five hours. So we have a minimum of three more hours to cook. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and bump it down a little bit because I want it to run around the 220 mark. So anyway, we'll uh, be back with you when I have something more to report. It should be a couple of seconds for you, but it'll probably be two to three hours for me. See you then. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at it. I have checked it a couple of times and uh, we're getting low on pellets but we're really close to the end and I don't want any pellets left. I did bump it down a little bit lower on the temperature. I just wanted to keep it down as low as I could and still get it to cook. So we're gonna look at that there and uh, that's the bottom side. I think what I'll do is I'll go ahead and take a picture real quick so you can see that. 
That was smart. I put the glove on, touched the meat, but my phone is in that pocket. Okay. I cut a little piece off of the edge here. You'll see that. Um, I'm going to put the picture over here. You'll see that little cut out there. And uh, it's just right here on the corner. I cut that and uh, taste that. I want to get an idea of how it was coming along. So a little bit of the uh, fat kind of stuck and ripped a little bit there, and it is well cooked. So I'll give that a try. It's all right. Taste is great. This was just a little fatty, so that's something you, you know, wouldn't want to eat a bunch of. So I'm going to pop another picture there. And uh, the crosshatch marks worked out really good. You could tell that a lot of the oil came out. And that's what we were going for. It's run down the tray there and just drip down. So I'm going to go ahead and get this closed because uh, she's still got a little ways to go. I um, did temp check it a few minutes ago, but we're going to keep checking the inside and uh, go from there. So... Uh, we're almost done here, so I'll be back. It's probably got about an hour left to go. I'll see you in a minute. All right, so we're getting down to the end of the line here, and uh, it's uh, starting to get dark here, so I wanted to get this off while we still had a chance to get some good shots on it. Um, so it's been about eight and a half hours, maybe a little longer, and it could easily go for another hour and a half or so, as long as you kept the temperature really low. You don't want to be blasting it on a high temperature. You want to keep that temperature down really low and let it have a chance to continue to break down a little bit. But if you get it too high, you're going to overcook it and it's just going to dry out. So the target temperature in the recipe is anything above 145. And, uh, I like to get it up to about 155 and hold that temperature. So it just, like I said, it lets the meat have a real good chance to break down. So I went ahead and turned up the pellet smoker just because I'm gonna burn off the leftover pellets and it'll also help clean out the stuff. So I'll go ahead and take this off. Slide it right back up there. And I'm gonna leave the uh, grill mat on there for now. And uh, we'll just let you see. So I'm gonna hold that up there so you can see it. And then um, see if we can get a look at that. And uh, there's a lot of nice color around the edges there. And it's nice and uh, got that smoke ring going on. So I'm going to take this inside and here's the picture from inside the house right here. So you can get a good look at that um, and uh, I'll cut a couple of slices off of that and you can see the inside there. So we'll uh, like, let, I'm just basically going to cut a couple of steaks out of it, which is not the um, main thing. The main thing you'd like to do is be able to pull it and that will require another hour or so at that low temperature. So anyway, Everything that uh, the article, for the written article, how to uh, smoke a Boston butt on a pellet smoker is the first link below. And then underneath is a, a link for the Traeger uh, reviews. And you'll find all the links for all the things that I use below that. And the recipe is in that article in that first link. Those links below are Amazon affiliate links. So if you use those, I will get compensated and I appreciate that. And uh, it's time for me to go eat some pork. So thanks for watching. Have a great day.